everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today, as you can see, I have G well, you can only see his nose because he is staring out of the out of the door. Hello, G. Um, so today I am going to try jumping, G. So yeah, I'm not sure how this is gonna go. I think I'm not sure if you have ever jumped. He might have as a youngster or a baby, but with me, never, and I've had him for five years, so definitely not not familiar with the old jumping are you <laughs> no i know so anyway yes what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna jump him today and we're gonna see how it goes we're gonna pray that i survive and that you you know keep your hair on um i'm gonna start off by doing trotting poles because we're not just gonna throw them in the deep end we're gonna gonna start with trotting poles then we're gonna upgrade to like cavaletti style little ones and then hopefully pop over a jump um I'm going to ride in a dressage saddle because he's used to that and it's not like we're going to be, you know, competing in the Grand Prix or anything. We'll just be, um, sorry, I'm just filming a vlog. Yeah. <laughs> um, Stop it. <laughs> and it's, yeah, we're not competing in the Grand Prix or anything. We're going to be just bobbing over some little ones. Nothing special, but just to build his confidence and my trust with him. Gee, what are you doing down there? Can you, come on. Um, yeah, I think it'd be good fun. I think I like varied training for the horses. I like them to be getting different things. I've been hacking him, cantering around the field. He's just been having a varied life. So last on the list is to jump. And we will see if we're gonna make a show jumper off him yet. It remains to be seen, because at the minute he's like a little donkey. What are you doing? Um, don't nipple me. Anyway, I, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video and please do like and subscribe. Normally, so first off, time first, to pop my helmet to on and hop my on my gorgeous horse. So a lot of you might wonder why so you're mostly you only so seeing G at the minute and I think it's because I have a lot of fresh content to film with G with my other horses. There's not a lot I haven't done or tried. And also G and I just have this really close connection. He is 100% my heart horse. I love every hair on his head as it is. I love every piece of fur on his body. He is just the best horse in the world because he's the best horse for me. So that's why you get to see my handsome boy so often at the minute. And please nobody come at me for jumping him in a dressage saddle because I kind of use the term jump very loosely. This is not what I consider jumping per se, but it's definitely what he considers jumping. And you've really got to start somewhere, whether it's a little cross, a cavaletti, whatever it is, a raised pole, you have to start somewhere. So please don't come at me for the jumping saddle. He is used to that. He would not be used to my legs in a different position. And I'm not quite sure how he'd feel about that. And I just didn't want to kind of blow his brains on on the same day. So anyway, I start by walking him quite a lot and I walked him straight over the poles. He wasn't 100% sure about the, the jumping blocks either side, but that's why we put them there. We thought, pop them there, let him see them while he does something familiar to him, which is poles, because he's definitely done that before, um, and let him get used to it. So in my walk with G, I always start by doing some walk leg yields, pushing him from side to side. I find this really loosens up his back and helps stretch his body. He's always a little bit lazy and a little bit slow going in. As you can see, I'm having to really work hard and use my body to bend him around. But it really benefits him when we do get into trot. So yeah, I did the poles a few times and he was a little bit like, oh, what's going on? As you can see, he's walking them a bit like, oh, what are they? Um, as you can see as well, they are really wide. And we did them a bit wide to start because I thought maybe I'll do canter poles. And then I actually realized I should probably do them a little bit smaller just to start. So here we are stretching. And as you can see, G does this really weird cough sneeze thing when I first get on him. He always does about four and it's like clockwork. And he normally pulls my entire body out of the saddle. Um, but I'm learning how to sit that back. He occasionally does a little, a little fart with it as well. So I definitely turn the sound off in this because we don't need to be hearing that. So yeah, I do a good 15 minute, well actually no, probably about a 10 minute stretch on him and really push him from side to side. I do leg yields in the stretch too. Um, don't judge how it looks at the minute, obviously not a finished product, just nice stretchy, moving him from side to side, forward and back, just warming him up and giving him the benefit of a good warm up and good riding. Um, 
so I warmed him up for quite a while because I thought I wanted to do a proper dressage session so he was a little bit more tired and a little bit more used to the normal the normal scenario of how he would ride and then kind of wanted to throw the poles in at the end and I thought I want to start in trot and do some trotting poles get him used to it get him going through the blocks and getting him moving around so as you can see I started picking him up and he looks beautiful we are just getting to grips with our changes they're not 100% clean yet but actually today we managed to get um, some three tempies and some four tempies without any issues so absolute amazing we are we are hitting some milestones every single day so when I first went over the poles they were way too wide um, so we actually rolled them closer and shortened them a bit and they were about 2.5 um, footsteps like big big strides across um, shortened them and tried again but he actually it is good for G to make them a little bit wider than you normally would because it really makes him pick up his legs and it really makes him focus as you can see, he added a couple of steps between and he didn't love that distance, so that was our fault. But with poles, there's not really a right or wrong answer. You should just feel it out. A lot of horses have very different striding. G has really big steps normally. So as you can see, much shorter and he found it easier. It was a mission trying to get him straight over those. He wanted to keep going out of the side, but I kept him straight, kept my leg on and went forward and as you can see that elevation look at that one two three oh watching that just makes me so satisfied I apologize for this shameless slow-mo but we needed that anyway so then we upped the end one to a cross and thought trot him over so it's basically like a raised pole and he did that no problem no questions asked he was such a good boy I had to stop for a mid-session pat and a little walk because I do like to make sure he gets a breather in every session and just a chill um, and then to try it again and he was trotting the last one like um, just basic kind of normal trot like a cavaletti which I was pleased with but then I did think it was going to be a little bit harder to make him jump it so I thought let's try it in canter and I had to move one of the poles in a minute but we thought canter three poles before we canter a little jump because I had no idea how he was going to be I could already tell that he'd never really been near a jump so I thought let's take this slow and give him the benefit and he was, he was like, what is that? So as you can see when he jumps, oh, he, he got a little bit confused there. He was like, I do not want to do that. Um, normally I would have kept my leg on and made him go over it, but he'd actually stopped dead a little bit soon. And obviously I'm not going to try and force him over it and walk. So anyway, round the corner and try again. I kept my hands a bit straighter and my legs a bit further on here just to make sure he did it. And he was a bit confused. He was just like, what is this I'm trying to jump? And it was it was quite funny. I mean, you can see his genuine nature with the fact he's going over it and he's not doing anything wrong, as you can see here. So he jumps really weirdly. He kind of takes off nicely and then he lands with his front legs before his back legs lift up, which is really unique. As you can see there, he did just have a little bit of a panic and got a bit excited. So I always stop him pet him and make sure he's he's okay um <laughs> every single time we jumped he kind of ran off afterwards and it was it was very cute it was very endearing um a lot of people will probably comment that you know he's not a very good jumper and that maybe I was doing a few things wrong but to be honest I was so pleased with the fact he was getting over it and I wasn't doing this to make him into a jumping horse, obviously, I mean, that would have been a hard push, but I was doing this to help his brain and his body. Jumping is so good for their body. They have to lift their back up and it's, it's just fantastic for them. And for a dressage horse, it's really good for them to do something else because dressage is very repetitive. It's round and round in a circle and, you know, round and round and round and round. And I wouldn't say it's the most stimulating thing for a horse's brain. So. I really enjoyed doing this and giving him something else to think about because his brain and his happiness is very, very important to me and that's how we'll get the best as a combination. But anyway, enough about that, let's go back to this jumping. Um, I kept changing the reins and he did get a little bit more confused every time I changed the rein. Um, as you can see, he didn't really improve, like he didn't really get it. And I did decide to keep putting the jump up a little bit bigger. I mean, we only went to kind of 
a cross that was on the top bit either side, which is not big by any standards, but it was giving him a little bit more to think about every time. And what I noticed was his trot went really, really beautiful in the middle. His trot and canter in the middle of the jumps was some of the nicest work we'd had. And I think that's because he was picking his legs up and he was having to think. <laughs> As you can see, he finds it very, very exciting. He did refuse that one, which I thought was a bit random. Um, but we just we just moved forward. As you can see there, again, he knocked the whole thing over and then ran off. So I decided he was probably getting a little bit stressed. So pop some poles down, trot him over them, take him back to basics as it were, and make sure that it didn't become a stressful thing for him. So as you can see, we didn't exactly conquer great heights, but we made a start and I thought it was amazing. And it was, he was absolutely fantastic. His nature was beautiful. He didn't put a foot wrong really. He got a little bit of excited, but he's a very genuine horse and it was very nice for him to show me that that's the worst he's going to do. So I'm going to try jumping him maybe once every two to three weeks because I don't actually think he liked it that much, but I do think it's really, really good for him. And who knows, with time, we might get better. You might see us at a jumping competition. I'm not going to hold my breath for that because I think that'd be really silly, but yeah, you never know. He he's a cute horse and we might do great things together you never know um so yeah I took him over the pole a couple of times in a stretchy trot I always stretch him for about five minutes if not a little bit more at the end of a session and the goal is to have his kind of nose on his knees so that way I've got a nice contact into that and I know he's genuinely stretching over his back um his back health is very important to me I want him stretchy limber happy because you know, dressage is quite tough on the body, so I want to make sure he's good, but as you can see, I just gave him a huge pat and a love because I was just so proud of him. I had a smile on my face the entire session, and at the end of every session, I take him outside either for a walk around the field, a hack down the lane, or even, you know, a canter around one of the fields, depending on how much work we've done, and I do this because it's kind of a treat for him, like, after every session, we get to go outside and do something a little bit more fun, it's not just the same four walls of a dressage arena, um, I sped this up because, you know, it was a whole way down the lane and back, and I just thought, we don't all need to see that, but... It's really good for him as well because it's super spooky. It's full of different changing light, sounds, different, and he's just, he's getting better and better every day. So yeah, there we go. Um, that is jumping done. And G is hacked and finished now. So he is gonna go in the field all day as a treat. Well, I mean, he goes in the field every single day and he loves it. So out in the field for him and there is a very happy rider now. So everybody, that was my first experience of jumping G and as you can see from the video, he is not going to be a show jumper, I think that's fair to say, um, but he did a really good job. I think I don't think he's ever jumped in his entire life because he had no idea what to do. <laughs> Jeez, stop it. Um, he had no idea what he was doing, didn't know how to pick his legs up, so um, yeah, I think that was the first time and I think all in all, very successful, I didn't die, he didn't die. Yeah, so overall he was very genuine, very sweet, and just tried his best. I did have to keep my leg on to make sure he knew he was going over the jump, because he kept trying to get out the side, um, because he just had no idea what he was doing. So yeah, that was first experience of Jumping G. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thought he was as cute as I did, because he's just the best. And please do like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.